First and foremost, everybody will look at the STM 1800 and go, oh my god, it's huge, where am I going to store it? Come in here, cameraman. Check it out. It folds down and together, and it fits right under your MFT3. So in the past, when people came to trainings, <clears throat> they would go, how many MFTs do I need? Well, I would always suggest three. And the reason I would do that would be because, you know, you have your crosscut station here or your routing station joinery, right? But you also need, I would always say, tell people, two tables to what? Put your plywood on and rip it. Then we came out with the STM 1800. Now here's another tip I'm going to show you. You see this one? It's all folded up. It, it's locked together with this little green piece right here, this little bracket. This can be tippy. So what I learned, I call it the flying V. When I'm moving this around the shop, I turn it out, I take one of those brackets off and I go like this. Okay? It opens up. It's, it's easy to transport that way. And then if you put it in the van or the truck down by the river, okay, you can take that and just fold it like that and lock it up against your, your bulkhead in there. Or your bot system, sustainer systems of North America system. And by the way, we got more coming with that. Okay, so it's not made out of aluminum. Not that aluminum is inferior, but it is extremely durable. I have beaten the snot out of this for two years. I can't break it. Look. It's all metal construction, and it's got these wood pieces on top, so you can cut into without damaging your blade and cut all the way through the plywood. It's amazing. All right, first thing I do is I take off this piece, okay? It's a bracket that holds the wood. I'm gonna go in more in depth on this as a wicked cool tip. There's a little piece right here. I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna take that other bracket here. And this is how I set it up, okay? People who've had this for a few years may have a different way of setting it up. This is the way I choose to set it up. Now, <clears throat> when you're putting it together, and I called this out in episode 22, there's four wheels or casts that come with it. Now, one of the tips I'm going to call out is I oil them usually every six months, but I choose the right oil. Does anybody know the right oil? Mm, castor oil. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay. Hey, bad, bad. my only dad joke today. Well, no, no promises. Mm, castor oil. Hey, Mo. Okay. So, out of the four casters, two of them are locking. And where I always put the locking ones, because I just found it's easier to control plywood with, as I, you see these brackets right here that flip up or flip down? That's where I put the locking casters. All right, so when I start to adjust this, there's four heights, okay? The lowest setting, it's 700 millimeters to the top of these rails. I'm going to call something out on these rails and brackets in a little while. And it, it increments in every 15 millimeters. So the next height is 750. The height after that is 800. Pretty good at this metric math, ain't I? The next height is what? 850. But the final height, which I'm going to set it to now, and this is how I work it. Watch, I'm always using that foot of mine. I lock it in like this. I pull it like this, and I'm going to bring it out to the final setting, and I'll lock it in like this. Okay, just like that. And then what I'll do is I'll lock my foot in here like this. Whoop, 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 whoop. All right, I'll take it like this and bring it back. And what's nice about this is the last height I haven't called out is 900 millimeters. And if that rings a bell, it should, because guess what that's the height of? The height of the MFT. Remember, Festool is a system. So I'm just gonna take it like this. I'll bring it back down. And then that piece I just took off, I'll lock it in the middle. Now, if we look at this configuration, sometimes this might make a great work table for somebody. But, <clears throat> Peyton, you okay? Someone's a little hungry. <laughs> All right, whew. All right, so, when we set this up, there's these four pieces underneath, and I'm gonna take it out like this. I'm gonna set it up. I'm gonna set up the whole way. It comes with another one of these brackets and another piece of wood, but these lock in here like this. You can adjust these for different sizes, okay, of material, but I'm gonna lock it in here like this. And as I do this, I want to show you this little piece here. There's a little tab here. I'm going to pull it all the way out. And you see how that locks? So you're going to see 
There's all kinds of ways to configure this. At home, when I use this at home, there's sometimes I don't put it this height. I put it a little bit lower. I throw a piece of sheet good up there and that becomes my assembly table. And I can adjust it to any height, which is comfortable for my height, my size. Now there's a, Chris, come in here, Cameron, and look, there's another tab here. I pull it out. I'm going to bring it all the way out and lock it in. So now you're going to see how it expands. I'm going to bring this out. And I'm going to take all four pieces and brackets and bring it out. Just like this. Woo! Man. This is too much fun. So when I say I can't work without this, I'm constantly <clears throat> ripping down sheet goods. And it's not just here. I mean, we, Garrett and I built this entire while. Oh, by the way, say hi to Garrett. Garrett is online answering questions today. I, I didn't care all Garrett, did I? I don't think so. Oh man, I'm so sorry, Fumio, that I didn't call you out. Uh, I just did. Okay, good. Now I'm gonna whip this out like this, see this? I'm gonna put this in here like this. When Garrett and I built this wall right here, we always use the SDM to break down our goods. And what I'm gonna do is now, I'm gonna swing this. Chris, get in here, cameraman. See this little part right here? What's the one problem <coughs> in, a, in a shop or on a job site? Is you gotta to, to maneuver that piece of plywood, you gotta grab what? You gotta grab the electrician or the plumber, or you gotta hire a helper to just move that piece of plywood up there. No longer needed, check this out. Or you're alone in your shop, okay? Just take it like this. I like to bump these out just to give me a little extra in there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this. Oh look, there's that piece of four by eight piece of plywood. I'm just gonna take it like this, bring it right in. And then sometimes I'll do this, look. I'll lock that in. I'll lock this one in like this. And then I'm just gonna come over here and use a little bit of leverage, right? Oh. Look how easy this is. Look, I'm just gonna take that and bring it right on those two little pieces. If the plywood isn't as warped as I wanted it to be. Hey, Mo! And then I'm just gonna hustle that up just like this. So what I do is I put my foot on here just like this and I go bring it up like this. Now I can work on it, right? I like to bring it out here, obviously, because look, look how these are all cut up. They're designed to be cut into, okay? But I'll talk in just a few minutes. I'll show you something really cool that I've learned over the, over the two years. I'm gonna bring it out here. I'm basically ready to go. What I'm gonna do is just so I can move this into the position I like to do it in here, I bring it all the way back here like this. And some people may think, you know, I would probably push those in a little to give me more working space, but hang in there, I wanna, I wanna show you this. Okay, so when I'm ripping in here and I'm ripping 400 millimeter pieces, of course the first thing I'm gonna do, and I'm not gonna get into it today with you because I've already taught you this, is you always straight line rip this to clean up an edge. But then I use my parallel guides, which I'm kinda lost without if I don't use these, okay? And I make my cuts. But what I do, is instead of taking them, those 400 millimeter rips now, I t instead of stacking them here, okay? I hate moving material around the shop. If I can save a step or two, I'm going to, okay? So what I'll do is I'll just take my parallel guides off like this, and, I'll, and we gotta pretend now, for camera time or Festool Live time, I've just ripped that 400 millimeter piece. Guess where it goes? It, where's it gotta go next? Is what I should. It's gotta go to my MFT, my cross cutting, because now I gotta do my 1224s or my shorter uh, box sides. And so I just leave it like this. And as I'm cutting it, right, as I'm ripping it, I just keep making my stack over here. And then what do I do? I take it like this and I wheel it right over to my cross cut station right here. <clears throat> and I just bring it right in like this. And look, I'm not busting it, I'm just making sure it works. And then what I'll do is I'll put another table of uh, MFT here, or 
the little additional table for support. So it's kind of effort that you use with the uh, MW1000. So it's just a nice, easy system to use. It's a great addition to our system. Um, everything's the same height. It's repeatable. I keep going on and on, but it just works. So I'm gonna clear some of this stuff off and hopefully that came across halfway clear. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna bring this over here like this. I'm just gonna take this because the next thing I wanna talk about is, I'm gonna set this down now, just like this, nice and easy. I always put my foot in there. That's what I do at home at least. Okay, I'm gonna take my plywood off like this. And, and somebody's actually reached out. I forget where I saw, I met that person, but they love this because in, at their truck, one of these heights is at the height of their tailgate. They just wheel this right over to their truck and it helps them maneuver boards in and out of their barn. So there's all kinds of different things that you could use the STM for. In other words, Let's just boil it down. It just makes your life a lot easier in the shop. Picking up a four by eight piece of plywood is super awkward and heavy. It's bulky. This just makes it easy. Okay, next thing I wanna show you is this. I'm gonna take these and turn them around because we're gonna talk about this. And I was talking to Brad down in repair. He runs the repair shop, Brad uh, Presley. Presley, right man? And uh, Brad and I were talking and he goes, you know that first time I was talking about PATS uh, available for the STM and it's on there, it's on the ECAT system. We can get them for you. And I go, did a lot of people order the brackets last time? He goes, oh my God, we had a slew of people order the brackets. The brackets are these pieces right here and there's two of them, two different types. See it right here? This, and I'm gonna mess with this one in a few minutes. No, actually that one over there, Chris, because <clears throat> I wanna show you something really cool. Okay, these are number one posi drive screws. Everybody knows the difference between posi drive and Phillips. If not, I've only talked about it a thousand times. Okay, but take a posi drive number one, you could take those out. But I want you to notice this. You see the bracket right here? There's two. This bracket number is the single one, and it's 102-93265. Amazing how I remember that. You know how I remember that, Scooter? How do you remember that? I got it written right over there. <laughs> it's really? and, and by the way, you can rewind this. That's the beauty of YouTube. And you can remember the number that way. Okay, now there's another bracket and it's on these longer pieces. Okay, and it, this is so important. Okay, there's two of them that hook to this piece. That's 24 by, um, Oh, I got, the, I got it written down. I'll tell you the size of this, okay? But it's 24 by, actually 25 by 25. If you want to split hairs, it's 24.7. All right. Um, but I want you to look on this bracket right here. See how there's no ribs? Let me pull this one again. There's one for ribs here. See it? Okay, this is important. Okay, now, the bracket number for this, okay, and you need two for the longer pieces. Chris, hang on a second. It's 102-93275. Whoop, 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 whoop. But you can look up all those numbers on our Spare Pats catalog on the Festool USA and Festool Canada websites. Whew. Okay, now here's the difference between the two. Yes, one has one and one has two. But it's these ribs under here. You're going to notice right here. See how there's a slight offset? That's what those ribs compensate for. So if you're gonna put something out here, something different, you'll understand what I mean in a minute, that's what those ribs are for, to compensate for the offset. These work right here. Follow? Okay, see how I flip these around? Now, whoa, it's over here. I showed you this last time, I wanna show you it again. You can buy brackets. And look what I have here, isn't this a dandy? Because you can do this, and make yourself an additional work table. And if I put that on correctly, like this, and like this, guess what? It's the same height now, okay? And you can check that out. 
<clears throat> and I've seen people, they've sent me pictures of them doing an additional work table, another clamping surface. They've dogged out these holes at 20 millimeter and it works with all the Festool system clamping components. Whew. So there you go. Just You just gotta take the right measurements from here to the top here and then compensate with the brackets. Cut your wood, bore it out, and it just snaps right into place. So there you go. Also make sure you do it by flipping these in reverse. So these pieces are not up. Whew. But I wanna do, and I wanna do it do justice because I truly think this is a huge Festool difference. Why someone should look at our system. A simple piece of plastic and a simple strip of plastic. So here we go. I'm gonna set this down and I'm gonna make a cut. And I want you to see this. Well, let's talk about using a regular circular saw to make a cut on plywood. It's pretty simple. The way I used to do it is I had a shooting board for my circular saw if I needed to break down a sheet before the table saw. And what I would do is I would mark the board about an inch and a half from the base of my shoe. I would put it on that straight guide like this and it would work pretty good because what I would do is I'd take some blue tape and put it on there and then I would cut my line that I knew it was going to cut to the inside of my blade and then I would, and then because I didn't want to break the veneer. Okay, or cause chip up because you know if I use just a regular saw, that blade's gonna come up and chip that top veneer. And everybody knows that top veneer gets thinner every week from the manufacturer of the plywood. So, the question was, why is it that this splinter guide is not cut all the way through? And there's a reason for that. And this will help you set up your track saw when you first get your guide rail with your track saw. And this has been a common question over the years here at Festool and Training. People come in and go, man, that's not cut all the way through. Well, you can cut it all the way through if you want, but don't, oh, and hang on a second, take two seconds out. When you're setting up to initially marry your saw to your guide rail, you take these cams. Come in here, chipster. Okay, see this right here? So that's called slop or lateral tolerance, right? So, like I've shown you in previous episodes of Festool Live, you tighten it up, okay, like this, so it moves smoothly, but you've knocked out the lateral tolerance. Now watch this, hopefully we can get this on camera. When one of these cams comes off the rail, look, you lose accuracy cutting the splinter guard. So when I cut the splinter guard, I start back here with this cam engaged, not out here, because there's wiggle room this way as well, I start here and I cut, whoopsie, let's do that again, and I go to here and I bring it up. Now that's why it's not cut all the way through. Now you can do this, because you have a track saw, you can cut it and go like this, right, and cut it all the way to the end. But don't expect that splinter guide to line up on your witness mark. So what I like to do is if I have rails like that, I mark them there because I know to line up my splinter guide once I cut it inside this right here. Hopefully that makes sense. So why the splinter guide? Let's do this. You don't want this finished product. You want it as simple as possible. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to take my Bluetooth battery and put it on here. I'm just gonna verify that I have it synced. Okay, so it's not synced. So to sync it, hmm, I'm thinking about it. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, I could do one of two things. I could hit the Bluetooth here, boom, and sync my battery, or I can just take my remote, and that's what that button's for, look. And it's gonna turn blue. See it? Good, and now if I turn it on, the dust extractor comes on. Okay, so I'm going to put it on like this, and now the other part I want to show you about the track saw is this, this little window right here. See how I push it down? That helps block some of the dust that has a tendency to shoot forward. So I'm going to take that, okay, I get it set for my depth, and I'm going to make the cut. 
Now this is, when we were setting this up today, I told Gage, this is the, how do you say, this is the uh, shot that I need. And Gage, I'm gonna have you pull in and bring that camera right down. Okay, check this out, and hopefully we can get right down on here. There is 0.0, .0 tear out on that cut line. Now what happens <clears throat> is, if I'm out and about and people say, wow, that's because they'll always ask this first about the track saw. They'll say, hey, what blade is that? That's amazing to cut like that. And I go, it's a 42 tooth blade, 1.8 millimeter, right? But it's not the blade that does that. The blade is this, this sidewall right here. It's, there's not a daggone uh, saw blade mark on there. And that's because of constant speed under load and the blade. But what causes this is this simple piece of plastic called a splinter guard. And <clears throat> I always tell everybody, look, really quick for everybody out there, okay? This is cross grain. Long grain, it's not a problem, okay? But it's cross grain that that really shines. So to get a splinter free cut, you can now just lay your rail right on there, whether it's at zero degrees or anywhere between zero and 47 or minus one and 47, you will get a splinter free cut. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to point out to the, uh, today, well, before I replace the splinter guard on the track, let's talk about this. This splintering on here as well, right? So what if I want to, and then I'm doing a bunch of cabinet sites that I don't want any splintering on either side of the cut. <clears throat> I'm gonna do this really quick because I'm gonna be using the saw, showing you things on the saw, and whenever I do that, I remove the bad breeze. Okay, so what if I wanted an outside splinter free cut? I would take the window off. Let me get it out of there, okay? And this is the outside splinter gad, okay? It comes with a knob. <laughs> Okay, you get one with it, but you can get replacements. And the ones for the 75 over here, scooter, okay? See that right there? That's the style for the 75 and the old 55 EQ, okay? But we innovated and we created this one because this one can live on the machine inside. Okay. So if you notice, this is solid. Here's one I already have that I was cutting 18 millimeter with. See that? I need to kerf it. And that will do exactly what this is doing. It's holding the fiber down from lifting as that saw blade's coming up and cutting. But you gotta set this correctly. So I'm going to take it like this and I'm going to put it in. Now, in the Festool realm, there's a lot of, I think this is a metric either six or five. Uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of these. Always use the one that comes with the splinter cat because if this has a longer, I think I, my LR32 has a longer version of this. I tried it once and boy did that blade make a lot of noise cutting it. So don't do what I did. Use the one that comes with it. I put it on here and I don't tighten it all the way. What I want to do is I want to push it all the way down. So I bring it up like this, I push it down and bring it to the material. So hopefully we get that, it's setting down on the material. Sometimes you gotta pull it out just a hair. Okay, just like this. So it's sitting down on the material so I can get a true zero clearance. I push it down and I lock it in, just like that. Okay, and when I cut, it's going to, what? Create a zero clearance. So, <clears throat> instead of cutting one every single time, what I do is when I say I do this one for a half inch or 12 millimeter, I'd write 12 millimeter on there. This one I, I cut yesterday. It's for 18 millimeter. I know this plywood's 18. I'm just gonna put this on so you can see the cut. I don't, it's a consumable. When you are unsatisfied with a quality of cut, then you change it. I have no need to change. I'm just gonna take that down, put it right down to my material, just like this. Bring it right in and I am ready to go. So let me show you that cut. Get my batteries back on, nice and effective. You see, Chip, see if we can come in here. See how it's sitting down on the material? That's what you wanna make sure it's doing, 
okay? So that way there it's supported. Okay, so let's make the cut. And let's get in here, Gage, if you can. I'm gonna take my saw, bring it over here. I'm gonna lift this up. And this is a huge difference. Look how it's clean on both sides of the cut, splinter free. That's the outside splinter guard, right? So I wanted to make sure you saw that today because I truly believe that is a huge part of the Festool system. It's just not the saw. It's just not the track. It's the, <clears throat> it's the blade, but it's also this piece of plastic and this simple piece of plastic. So learn how to set that up and you'll be happy. Now, I'm always happy. Hey, <clears throat> really quick, I'm gonna go over it again. See how it's not cut all the way through? When you connect rails, of course it'll be cut all the way through, right? This is how you get, this one I replaced the splinter guard. This is ready to be cut. So what I thought I'd do is I think I've shown this in an episode, but I'm gonna do it again, is I'm going to take my splinter guard and I'm gonna bring it in here because somebody asked me this up at Atlas is I'm going to cut it a little proud like this, okay? I'm gonna set it off to the side. This is what the replacement looks like in the box. Okay, so let's get in here so you can see this chip come in here. See how this has a little ledge right here? Now somebody out there is probably saying, oh, you don't have to replace it with a brand new one every time. <clears throat> It'll, I, I can take it off and move it out a little. Yeah, you can, and recut it. But here's the situation. You put this down in like Florida, or Arizona or any really hot, hot climate and it's in the van. It doesn't have to be down by the river, but <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> uh, it'll move on you. It, it's, it's, too, it's too hot. So what I always suggest is see how I take this and I put it just shy of here, and there's a reason for that. I'm gonna take it like this, and I'm gonna stick it on the guide rail, pushing it up against that aluminum extrusion right there. Okay, and I'm gonna bring it in. And the other thing I'm gonna do, is you see how this is sticking out like this? Okay, here's what happens. If I take this and go like this, this is gonna peel off. Okay, but if I cut it just shy, watch, just like that. I don't need that, because look, I'm not gonna cut all the way through, right? Okay, now, here's the other thing. If you notice how I put this on, I went like this, like this, like this, like this. The adhesion is not all the way on the rail. So what I like to do, and you need a Domino XL for this. No, you don't. You need a piece of plywood or a piece of wood, is I'll start right here, and I'll take it like this. It's kind of like a J-roller, but I'll take it like this, and I'll bring it like this, and then I'll go back and forth, making sure, it's kind of like rolling a countertop, rolling mica out like this, okay? Making sure I get contact, that adhesive contact. Make sure, okay, and there you go. So it's that simple. Now, someone may ask, I've had this in my van, and these start to peel off at the end. No biggie. Here's a little bit of a hack, something I do. I take a little CA glue, and if it's coming up, I go like this, I put a dab in there and I hold it. I'm in a controlled climate here. It's heated, it's air conditioned. I don't have constant peel offs with it. This adhesion lasts and lasts and lasts. But if you run into that out on the job site, just a little, you probably have some CA glue. Just put just a little dab on there, hold it, it won't peel off. Okay. Let's step over here. I got one more splinter guide to talk about, and it's this one. I think one comes with the jigsaw, or used to. That's why we have these. They're packs of replacement of 20. I wanted to point that out. Now, I have a cordless Carvex here. You'll notice the battery is not on there. I'm gonna take that battery that I synced to the dust extractor, bring my dust extractor over. La, 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 la. Man, it's almost the weekend, baby. Whew. All right, 
So I put a Cavex blade in here, and let's look at the Cavex blade. This is the uh, FSG, which means it has a very heavy set and is very aggressive. Well, let's look at the cut that you get with this. Let me get this on here. I got my, my blade already set on there. I uh, did the carbide guides this morning. You can go to some episode that we did. I think that was the one early on, wasn't it, EP? E the unit is known as EP now, executive producer. Okay, so watch. This is the cut that you expect with a jigsaw blade. Look at that. Look at that tear out. That's why you stay away from the line on something like this and you finish it up with um, a right angle sander or the ETS-125, the right angle sander, if you're making a template or whatever. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this splint they got. Hopefully we see this. Gage, you got this right here? On here, on the splinter guide, you're going to notice there's a groove right here. See it? It's on either side. Okay, there's a point on here. That's the one, that point faces out. That's the center line of my blade, in case you need to follow it. Okay, where it goes is on this Noma base right here. Okay, that's Noma Garcia Para. Okay, good. <laughs> hey, not bad, huh, Chip? You okay, hang it. on a second. Let me give you a Noma. Okay, good. Quick Noma. Chris, you don't even know who Noma is. Oh my God. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, you see this? See how I have it up against there? We're gonna get this, I'm gonna turn it on just like this. Chip, don't get too close. Okay, and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna cut it. Okay, so let's do this. Let's, let's compare the cut. Okay, we have that one. Okay, then we have this one. Okay, let's take a vote. Everybody at home, I can see you. I want you to raise your hands. How many people like this one? Chris, you counting everybody at home? Okay, because we have those special cameras on their computer. Okay, and, and phones. And everybody who likes this one? I like this one. Cool. So that is the Festool difference now.